All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be doing a unboxing and installation video on this Blackstone 36 inch griddle with hard cover and folding shells. This one came from Walmart. I was going to get the one from Lowe's, but the 30 inch at Lowe's was $2.97. The 36 inch at Lowe's was like $4.97 or $3.97, but the 36 inch at Walmart was $2.97. So it didn't make any sense to get a smaller one from Lowe's for the same price or to spend more money to get a bigger one or to get this one from Lowe's for more money rather than getting this one from Walmart for cheaper. So here we go. So one thing that made me want to do this video is that on this box, it says easy assembly in 30 minutes or less and I don't believe it so what I'm going to do is once I get it unboxed we're going to start the timer and we're going to see if we can actually assemble this in 30 minutes or less so let's get it unboxed let's get everything laid out and then we're going to start the timer and we're going to see how long it takes us to assemble this 36 inch Blackstone Walmart griddle. So looking at this now, yeah, maybe this might only take 30 minutes. I think everything is unboxed at this point. Let's grab the instructions. And this is for the Blackstone model 2177 36 inch griddle. All right, so I have my timer here. It is also 625. So let's go. With the help of another person, remove blah, 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 blah. Unlatch and unfold the legs to their vertical position. Oh, I was wondering what the legs were. Unlatch. Oh, all right. So unlatch and unfold. It has a little latch on there. You to unlatch and unfold to the vertical position use two small thumb screws to attach the fixed wheels to the end of the right leg assembly what what we got here on the packet of things here it says thumb screws two pieces shear pin Oh, is it gonna take me longer to thumb screws because you tighten them with your thumbs. The little U notch is going towards the inside, like so. If you don't put the wheels in the right way with the the uh, thread part towards the inside these will not be long enough to reach so you want this part to be in the inside because otherwise it won't reach if it's that way so towards the inside short thumb screws and so with this we're using the wheel and the two acorn nuts so we're going to put them in here like that and then we are going to simply screw them on. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and do the other one same way. All right. As my grandfather would say in German, you want to get these good and tight. Next, it says to place the bottom shelf between the leg assemblies. Use one large thumb screw to attach the shelf to the shelf to the left leg, and one medium screw. You're going to take this shelf here and install it here. It looks like those screws are going to go there and there. 
And it looks like it's going to sit just like that. Long screw from this side. Use the medium thumb screw to attach the LPG support. So the LGP support is going to be this thing above here. So this is going to go here like this. And then insert that. And this is going to be the support for your propane tank. With the help of another person, set the griddle body on his feet. What's going to be the best way to do this? wasn't that bad so this is going to go this way cotter pin goes in and then you will have a small hole that you can't see and then that just pushes on and boom that's done and then next we have one m16 by 12 screw and two washers and then that's going to be for this it needs to go here and then it basically is going to lock in place as you turn it but like I said these washers need to be bigger and I'm just not seeing how that's going to work so for now I'm going to leave both of those washers off yeah something is wrong here all right so next we are moving to the knobs you have the flat side and the round side. I don't know if y'all can see that. So just make sure that for easeability that you have the flat side where the flat side should go. And then they just push right on. Simple. Cool. We are going to be taking this grab handle and install it here looks like and for this we only need four of the m6 by 12 screws and i'm just using my milwaukee uh m12 and i have the setting turned all the way down to like two so that way we won't have to worry about stripping any of these screws So you're going to be installing the pegs on the side shelves. As you can see, it has one, two, three, four holes. So it seems like they just, they just screw on. No, they said 30 minutes and we're at almost 21 minutes here All right. next we are going to be putting on these brackets go on this side and we have a left and a right we are going to need four more of the screws and the rights are going to go here the lefts are going to go here so you want the angle side you want this to be facing the, in, the inside on both sides. I like do like how they have the cutout for the screw up above so that it actually sits flush. Then we're going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. I'm saying take two M6 step bolts and put them on the inside of the lids. So it's looking like we're just going to put them on the top. The hook from the top is just going to sit right in that hook, that notch right there. 
So we're just going to simply. Oh, I picked the wrong one off. And you can see how nicely that it sits right in there. And then I believe we're going to take these and we're going to put them in the bottom. But we're going to take it and we are going to screw it right in there. Just like so. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. And I believe that should allow us to take this shelf and fold it down. So the bottom ones will still be attached. And then you lift up the top ones. Boom. All right, so let's do that on this side. We're at 32 minutes currently. And then goes down, comes up. Perfect. Secure the right side, it's just uh, the grease catcher. So the grease catcher is going to go in the back. It looks like the grease catcher just sits right there. Simple enough, no screws, nothing. It just sits there. And then it says with the help of another person, grab the griddle, place on top by aligning the four foot pins to the top holes of the unit. So what we're gonna do here is that we have, in the back, you have that hole, that hole. In the front, you have this slotted hole and this slotted hole. And I'm assuming oh, that on the griddle, yeah, on the bottom of the flat top, you have those pins. Oh. So what you're going to do here is that you are going to sit it in that hole, sit it in the, in the cutout and then you're going to push it back and when you push it back the back ones will line up so you sit the front into the cutout like that and then when you scoot it back then the rears drop into the hole and then that way this can't lift up and you can't go anywhere. So what do we have next? So we have the cover and we have, this will go under it straight to the front like that. M4 tins, but these are itty bitty. Where are we at? We're at 38 minutes for time. The hooks are gonna be forward towards the front of the grill. I'm gonna take the screw, I'm gonna put it through it and then I'm going to take the cover, lean it up to one side. I'm gonna place it through the bottom. I'm gonna take the handle, put it there. Let's get the screw through the bottom bracket. Like so, put the screwdriver on the screw push it through the hole and then get it into the bottom of the handle and get it started and I don't know how much of that y'all can see but once you get the first one started doing the back one is Easy money. All right, and give that a good, a good tug. And then we get to do it one more time. And I'm gonna see if I can get y'all up in there. And we're at 40 minutes right now. I say, if you have two people, this would be a much easier job. Let's 
like I said, get that up through the hole. And then get it lined up with the handle. Give it a couple of turns, get the second screw, and then get the bracket lined up with the back hole. Get the handle lined up. Sorry about that. Uh, battery died. All right, so let's start the timer back. Right now we're at 43 and a half minutes. So we have the handles on, we have the hooks on, and they are facing forward. So that way, when you pull your top off, it just rests on the back, just like that. But I see like hinge mounts, so it would be nice if it was hinged because I see the mounts, the way it's set up for a hinge, but these don't have hinges on them. So I might have to look into that. And that's it. So 44 and a half minutes. So y'all probably could do it in 30 minutes. I probably could have done it in 30 minutes if I wasn't talking. Now the only thing that I still need to figure out is this because with the washers and everything, it wasn't gonna work. So it needs to be kind of tight and then it'll just swivel off of those ball points to lock in place. So it seems like they wanted me to use those washers, but now I have, I think I have like some lock washers left or something. So I'm gonna go back, look at the instructions and then I'll get back with you with what I find out. So I did have these two black washers left over and guess what? It just so happened that they fit right over that stud. So let's take the washer on the bottom as the instruction says. Let's take the washer on top as the instructions say. And that's actually given the fit that I was looking for from the beginning. So I will say that works. So let's take this. So everything I have now is, is too long, but let me get that tightened down and then I'll be right back and let's make sure that it works how it should. I found my stubby. And I think that is gonna work. Yep. Then it locks into place. Yep, so those black washers are the ones that are big enough to fit over that stud. So the silver washers will not work. And I think there, now we have a full of functioning grill. Now I do not know where these lock washers go. I don't see in the instructions where to use these lock washers. So if y'all know where they go, leave a comment below, but I did not see the use for them. Also, if y'all know if we can use these hinges uh, for these tops, please let me know because I'd much rather have hinges than to have to do this right here. So if y'all know anything about that or how we can make that work with a hinge, let me know because I'd much rather use that instead. But yeah, we have the grill. Y'all can see how it looks. Like I said, the sides, you can lift up, they come down on both sides. So move this out the way. And then the top, you will have to grab and then manually cover up the grill like so. And then of course, all the drippings will come down to your drip pan. But yes, if y'all know how we, if we can use the hinges, please let me know, drop some part numbers, links to other videos or whatever, because that will be primo 
being able to use that. So, yeah, 43 minutes to get together. That's not bad. Could I have done it in 30? Maybe if I was rushing, but 43 minutes is still not all that bad. So, y'all let me know um, if y'all had any help from this video on assembly. Let me know if you have it. Drop your favorite recipes down or whatever you like to uh, cook with on your flat stone. If y'all have any y'all want to recommend, put them down below as well. But this has been Darius Bills. Like I said, 43 minutes. When they say 30, not too bad. Not too bad. Just semantics at that point. So think, build, and enjoy your flat top if you have one or if you're going to buy one. Peace. Also, for the igniter to work, you, have, you simply unscrew the igniter button and then you insert your AA battery. I like Amazon Basics. And then you screw it back in. And now your igniter works. Normally you have a 12 volt battery, but this one just uses a AAA. And that's it. So 